Go ahead. Let's call the council meeting in order tonight. Uh, we'll have the roll call, please. Council members Anderson. Here. Benega. Here. Brown. Here. Costello. Jameson. Knudsen. Here. Litz. Staggers. Present. Mayor yeah. Munson. Here we have a quorum present for tonight's meeting. Tonight we'll be led in the invocation by Pastor Ron Tottingham from the Empire Baptist Temple here in Sioux Falls. And after the invocation, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. So at this time, I ask everyone to please rise. Our Heavenly Father, tonight, thank you again for the privilege and honor to be able to be here at the City Council and open them with prayer. And I pray again that you put a blessing, special blessing, on the council members and uh, Father, it's a broad city, a big city, and a lot of opinions, and uh, we pray, Father, that on both sides, the things that are done here would be led by the Spirit of God, that we might, uh, that the city might be in peace with each other, and might be able to uh, understand the breadth of making decisions for this great city. And I thank you again for the privilege that you've given me to be able to live in the best city in the world. And again, we ask for your blessings on the City Council tonight. And not just tonight, but all of the deliberations they make, that it might glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll get started here. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I so move Knutson. Mr. Moose, is there a second? Second, Brown. Brown seconds. Further comments, motions? Seeing that all in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council Member Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Vinegar? Yes. Brown? Yes. Knutson? Yes. All members present voted five yes, three excused. The consent agenda has been approved. Now, is there a motion to approve the regular agenda? So moved, Benninga. Benninga moves. Is there a second? Second, Anderson. Anderson seconds. Further motions? Seeing none. All in favor of the motion to approve the regular agenda will vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council Member Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Knutson? Yes. All members present have voted. The regular agenda has been approved. Five yes, three excused. This is a time that we set aside for a period of five minutes. Anyone wishing to address the council, we ask them to come up and give their name and their address, and then for five minutes. My name is Lloyd Stivers. I reside at 6106 South Avalon Avenue. I am a member of the Board of Ethics. In fact, I have been a member since it was first organized. I was appointed by Mayor Hansen as a member of the board, and I was its chairman for the first three years. After I finished a two-year appointment, I then got a four-year appointment, six years. I was off a year. The person who replaced me was on the board for one year, moved out of town, and I was appointed by Mayor Munson to replace her to finish three years of that term, was reappointed for another four-year term, so that as of December 2009, I will have been a member of the Board of Ethics for 13 years and you as a city council have only had 14 years. So I am well acquainted with the, with the city code regarding the Board of Ethics. We have been told, members of the board, they know I'm here tonight representing them, as does the city attorney. They knew that there was some, something in the offing about making some revisions to the Code of Ethics. And you do have a first reading tonight of the revised code. I'm simply here basically to make an appeal that you might make contact with the Board of Ethics and its authors of this revision sit down with them so that they fully understand what the changes are and why they are being made. 
there are rumors going on around that there are some reasons that we as a board don't know. Not only that, but it's one of the changes specifically that has been made. In the revised vision, version, makes this statement that you as a mayor and council cannot be criticized by any member of the community who might ask for an advisory opinion. The only person who can ask for an advisory opinion that deals with the, let me read this, is it from the code? Who, anybody who has a request and an opinion about the mayor or council member, member, that request regarding their conduct or activities can only be made by a council member. In other words, we as citizens cannot criticize you. We want to know why. And we would like to have this explained to the Board of Ethics so that we might give our full support to what you are considering for the second reading and for the discussion. I'm simply here to appeal that you get in contact with the Board of Ethics. None of us were involved with the revisions. Okay, Kermit and Dean. Yes. Um, Lloyd, let me uh, just present a hypothetical to you. You mentioned the advisory opinion. Um, do you think it would be appropriate if a council member would ask for an advisory opinion on some action you may have taken or something about your life? you think it would be appropriate for a council member to do that? It can be confidential. Advisory opinions can be confidential or can be for publication depending mm -hmm. upon the person that asks for it. So if you ask for a, an opinion on one of the other council members or somebody who asks something on the council member, it can remain confidential. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a complaint, a complaint can remain somewhat confidential, but at some point it has to be publicly pronounced what the meaning is. But once again, do you think it would be appropriate if I'd ask for an advisory opinion on some aspect of your behavior? Yes. Well, yes. See, that's the, the if situation. It deals, if it deals with the code. Yeah. So uh, I think that, uh, well, I know those members of the committee that worked on this for many, many months, their view was is that in your, this hypothetical now with your behavior, if there was something that was questionable, we should bring a complaint, not an advisory opinion. So, I mean, that's where we're coming from. Well, I think you're asking for an advisory opinion can be done in strict confidence. Nobody needs to know about it. No, well, in that's fact, the we, as a, we that's... as a board of ethics, and I can tell you about my 12 years of experience right now, have had dealt with confidential public opinions, and they have not been released. And they may even involve some of the people who are sitting here tonight or are absent tonight. Now, let me we'll have, just ask. We'll have, we'll have no, this is, money to go if through. If I can just here, ask uh, one more question. Like, okay, let's suppose I ask for a confidential advisory opinion on some aspect of your behavior, and you don't even know about it. You think that's appropriate? Uh, I have read through the revised version twice, mm -hmm. plus some other looking at certain things. And I would, as I understand it, the individuals who are involved are also involved in knowing about it. They must be told that a confidential um, advisory opinion is being done with them, but it goes no farther. Because right now there are been instances where the person didn't even know. There was a, an advisory opinion asked about somebody uh, and didn't even know. Let's go to D. Um, first of all, Mr. Stivers, thank you so much for being here tonight, and mostly thank you for that many years of service on, on the Board of Ethics. What a thankless job. I mean, 
uh, for sure. Uh, anyway, is I'm just speaking for myself as just one member of the Public Services Committee, and I remember at one point when we started uh, talking about this because we've kind of been talking about this whole Board of Ethics, you know, wondering if we can improve what's on the books. We've been talking about this for, uh, I don't know, about two years. But I just want you to know that, again, just speaking for myself, I'm, I remember even once suggesting that we sit down with the Board of Ethics, and I, I didn't have a little, like, a resounding, uh, I guess, agreement on that. But, but anyway, as much time as we've spent on this, I know that I myself would be very happy at the Public Services Committee uh, level to uh, sit down with the Board of Ethics before we uh, even get to our second reading. So that's, I'm just uh, mm -hmm. saying I, I would, you know, you guys have so many years of experience with the Board of Ethics. I'm very open to hearing all of your thoughts. That's exactly what we're asking for. You have my vote for that. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm not counting the votes. Okay. But you see, there is a element here of consideration that says Members of the city council and the mayor are above criticism. No, no, that, that, that can be implied, Mr. Taylor. Listen, we're going to listen. That's listen, true. listen. We're, we, we hear you, Lloyd, and we're going to have this next Monday night. But tonight is, is just the first reading, so we can we can have that discussion later. So, other questions of, of Lloyd? And thank, but I want to thank you for coming down, and we'll indeed uh, we'll work with the council members to. Uh, Mr. Martin, I would hope that. You might delay that second reading so we have time as a board to discuss it and also to meet with others. To postpone that, yeah. that second reading so that you then have an <coughs> open discussion. And that will have to be a decision the council makes, so yes. we'll see what they say then. Okay, thank you very much. You're Appreciate welcome. it. Others that wish to address the council of public input for a period of five minutes, name and address. Seeing no one come forward, let's move into the Regular agenda, item number 27. Deferred action, second reading, an ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at East 57th Street and South Dubuque Avenue. Petition number 2008-10-18 and amending the official zoning map of the city of Sioux Falls. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Erica Beck with the City Planning Office. I'll be representing the next three items for you. Um, this this application to the to the Planning Commission is actually um, going to request withdrawal from for the consideration. Um, as of January January 20th, the applicant requested um, officially to be withdrawn from further consideration for the application as currently proposed, and they stated that they will be working towards um, resubmitting at a subsequent Planning Commission meeting. It will be noted that item number 27 will be withdrawn. Item 28. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at the northeast corner of East 69th Street and South Sycamore Avenue. Petition number 2008-12-09 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. The Planning Commission recommends approval. I just want to point out um, quick here for your reference that we have some new exhibits for you that you will start to see um, on a regular basis when Mike Cooper is up here presenting these items to you. Um, essentially, they're just going to be used to provide you with a better reference as to where these items are going to be located within the city of Sioux Falls. This particular property consists of roughly 138 acres. The applicant is checkpoint of Ron and Companies. This specific property is located in the northeast corner of East 69th Street and South Sycamore Avenue. The applicant here is proposing to rezone this property from the Ag District to a planned development district that will allow for future residential development, um, totaling 251 lots. The property was recently annexed by the City Council last summer, and the future land use amendment was also approved by the City Council in late 2008. Questions of Erica on item number 28. Others that wish to address the Council? Is there a motion to approve? So moved, Benningham. Benningham moves. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Brown seconds. Further comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to approve item 28? Vote well, yes. Those opposed, no. Councilor Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benningham? Yes. Brown? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. All members present voted five yes, three excused. Item 28 has been approved. Item 29. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at South Tuscan Club Circle. Petition number 2008-12-03 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. The Planning Commission recommends approval. 
This property consists of roughly 8.3 acres. The applicant here is Brian Ross, and the property is located on South Tuscan Club Circle, which is south of West 85th Street and east of Tallgrass Avenue. The applicant is proposing to rezone the subject properties, which include 16 single-family lots, to allow for setbacks allowed in the RS2 zoning district. He has requested the zoning change to accommodate architectural features that will be displayed within the houses built on these lots. Questions? Verica at item number 29. Others that wish to address the council? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? I so move Knudsen. Knudsen moves. Is there a second? Second, Anderson. Anderson seconds. Further comments on that motion? I see none. So all in favor? Yes. Those opposed, no. Councilor Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. All members present vote. Item 29 has been approved. Five yes, three excused. Item number 30. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the city by amending the Board of Ethics ordinances as found in Chapter 12 and a half of the revised ordinances of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Mr. Mayor, yes. Um, this deals with uh, a change in the ethics ordinance. And the, the purpose of this change is to put more due process uh, into the city's ethics ordinance. Now, what am I talking about in regard to due process? Well, we have a history in the past. Sometimes we've had complaints uh, against some city personnel or council members go before the ethics board, and the city council member or the city employee didn't even know about it. And we had the ethics board in secret making various decisions. And so, what this is going to do now is to say if there is a complaint, you know, the person that's being complained against is going to actually know about it. Uh, it says that uh, within two business days, uh, the person who has a complaint against them will be notified about this. So they will know what the ethics board is actually doing. Uh, also, too, another important change here is in regard to advisory opinions. Basically, you can have a complaint or an advisory opinion. Uh, a complaint would be if you uh, view a council member or you view a city employee doing something you feel is incorrect, you file a complaint. And that's taken before the ethics board. However, you might have a situation where a city employee or a city council member is not sure about maybe whether they should vote on a certain issue or, or do a certain thing. And uh, by using an advisory opinion, they could go to the ethics board to find out if they can do that or not. So th this is the essence of this um, change in the ethics ordinance, is to put more due process into our system. Questions of Kermit on item number 30? Um, I, I don't have a question, just in addition. The only other thought that I have, again, we've been talking about, you know, trying to improve what's on the books for so long that Sometimes I've kind of forgotten about what the earlier conversations were. The only other thing I thought about over the weekend when I was going through it one more time was, um, you know, I think it might be more appropriate to have the, someone from the city attorney's office uh, being the recording person there as opposed to someone from our office just because it very much fits into the legal uh, realm, I believe. And so that's just an additional suggestion I'm making for our next, uh, for revision. I guess I'd like to, e I'd like to even... Um, officially incorporate that now if I can. I, I think we have. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Can we bring just amend, maybe just amend an amendment, just amendment, amendment, amendment on, on, the, on the next reading? Be the okay, tenth. that's fine, yeah, okay. Further, further questions of Kermit? I guess I just have some concerns here. The gentleman from the uh, Ethics Committee came up and expressed his concerns. Uh, if this First reading is approved. When would be the next date? The we tenth. The tenth is scheduled for. Unless the ninth. The ninth. The ninth. ninth, 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 ninth of yeah, March. Second day. Yes. Ninth of March. Then. Or? Of, of, of oh, February. February. It's next week. It'd be, it would be next Monday night. So it'd be up to the council where they want to ne defer it next Monday night or what they want to do. So that'd be a council decision. So we wait till next Monday night and then defer it from there. Okay. And, and 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 can we make it uh, defer the second reading right now? I would like to make a motion to defer to, to defer this the second reading for this item uh, uh, for at least six weeks to uh, enable our committee to 
meet with the Public Services Committee to meet with the Board of Ethics. So, so, so get a calendar up then, but go ahead. If I could, I, um, not to interrupt the motion, but uh, the Public Services Committee, I do believe, meets next Monday. You're scheduled. Um, so you could actually meet at 5 o'clock and discuss that then if you wanted to. And I think Vernon had a question too, Mayor. Go ahead. I would encourage us not to, to delay this any further. I think we can meet with the uh, Ethics Committee, but we've worked on this for six months in a very open environment, uh, talked about it publicly yes. in our meetings, um, asked for input at all levels. Um, I, I, I think that it, it's unfair to the process to delay it for that long, and I would encourage you to uh, continue with the schedule we have. And uh, in the meantime, before next week, let's try to get together with the Ethics Committee. If there are problems then, we can delay it next week. Go ahead. Um, I'm very respectful of my colleagues' uh, comments on this, and I would agree that as a city councilor, uh, excuse me, as a public service committee, we have been talking about this for a while, um, and of course all of our committee meetings are open and so forth, but I'm not sure that the average citizen, uh, including the ones on Board of Ethics, ever you know, know exactly about what we're discussing in our committee meetings unless they're, you know, attending. Um, but I guess it's why I, it's why I suggested six weeks is not to drag this out unnecessarily, but I know many of us are in peer this week for Municipal League Day and for Sioux Falls Day at the legislature, and I just didn't think maybe that even next Monday was quite soon enough to give enough members of the Board of Ethics a chance to, to um, schedule uh, with us. So I would, I mean, it is true we've worked on this for a long time, but I guess I don't think six more weeks would really matter as long as we've spent on this. So I respectfully disagree with my good friend. Further comments? Not. Is there any motions at all? Yeah. Wait, no, we don't. We've we, we got to wait. we got one more. Do you want to make a motion? Or? Yes, I would like to make a motion to, to um, delay the second reading of this item for um, at least six weeks. Six weeks. We need a specific date. Would you, would you take it okay, well, I just need, I'm sorry, I don't have a calendar in front of me. I guess well, I could pull my one out of the drawer, forward, but so. The, that would be the uh, 9th of March if you take it, if you don't. We, we miss the fourth week. So if you take it six straight weeks, it looks like it would be about the 9th. Let's see, that would be one, two, three, four, five. Count to nine, six. That would be the 9th of March. And again, and if our committee met regularly as opposed to just monthly, I wouldn't delay it that much. So March 9th, then, is my, rec is my, is my motion. Motion is to set the second reading for March 9th for item number 30. Is there a second that motion? That motion dies for a lack of a second. Were any other motions on that? Uh, let's move to 30. Item, item number 31 then. First reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, conveying lot 5A, block 1, Hellray addition to the City of Sioux Falls. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Mark Cotter, the Office of Public Works. We've got um, the first reading tonight that will entail the, for the approval of the sale that resulted in an auction that was publicly held back in December of 2008. These parcels were originally acquired in 2002 for the expansion of South Louise Avenue. At the auction, there was five active bidders. The high bid was 189000 to the Winkles Living Trust by Robert Winkles. The appraised value was 140000 and tonight we are recommending the approval of this sale. Questions of Mark? Go ahead. Yes, Mark. Uh, how long ago did we purchase that property, and at the time, how much did we pay? We purchased that property back in 2002, mm -hmm. and... When we purchased the properties, that's when they also had homes on them. And so the aggregate of those four lots um, had, a, had a purchase price of $481,170. There's also been um, additional costs from closing costs. We auctioned off the homes that were on those, so there was proceeds. And now with the sale of the land, which is a positive 189,000. It's in a there's a there's a series of costs that come into play when you do property acquisitions of this type. And do you have any idea how much we were able to sell those houses off for? I do. Okay. I 
have a have an approximate total for you tonight mm -hmm. of for those four houses of sixty four thousand okay. dollars. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Further questions? Not. Is there a motion to set the hearing date for February 9th for items number 30 and 31? I so move Knutson. Knutson moves. Is there a second? Second. Brown. Brown seconds. Further comments? Not all in favor set the hearing date for items 30 and 31 for February 9th. We'll vote yes. Those opposed, no. Councilor Staggers. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Vinegar. Yes. Brown. Yes. Knutson. Yes. All members present have voted. The hearing date has been set for February 9th for items number 30 and 31. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second. Second. Very good seconds. <laughs> um, all in favor of that motion? Yes. Those opposed? No. Councilor Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Vinegar? Yes. Brown? Yes. Knutson? Yes. We stand adjourned. All right. Sure you don't want to